everybody. Happy Monday and welcome to Collider TV Talk, TV Talk for TV fans. I'm your host, Sinead DeFries, and this is the weekly show where we bring you the latest news from the world of television, plus talk about the week that was in TV. Joining us this afternoon is Josh McCuga. Oh, Sinead, God, just fantastic to be here with everybody. I know <laughs> I missed David all the end of the week last week. He was at Star Wars Celebration. Can't wait to hear about your travails. We had so much TV to watch this week. Leftovers is back. Veep is back. We're going to talk about all of them. Uh, just a ton to get to. I'm super excited. It's Monday, guys. It's TV Talk. Who else is here? Sinead. Also here is David Griffin. So this is uh, <laughs> Chapter 7 of Timothy Zahn's new book, Thrawn. It took a week for Captain Rossi to come fully up to speed on her new command and to acquaint herself with her ship, her officers, and her crew. <laughs> Stay tuned later for more readings from Aww. Thrawn <laughs> on Collider Book Talk. <laughs> do you want to come over and like read to Harrison oh. at night? I, I'd love oh. to do that. I have some Berenstain Bears I, books. We have been wow. doing this yeah. show for over a I'm year ready. now, yeah. and that is the most excited I've ever seen you on the show. <laughs> Sinead offering you to read his, to her child. His favorite book is the, the Little Princess, that little yeah. Darth Vader oh. book. Yeah, you know? that's Vader and book, yeah. Leia. That's his favorite book. That. I mean, I don't actually know if it's his favorite. I just tell myself. Yeah, new job. <laughs> But, Book you know, reader to children. It's, a, it's his favorite today. <laughs> Just awesome. Go awesome. All right. Also, here is Emma Fight. Hello. So happy to be back this week for Collider Book Talk. Uh, <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, TV, that's what we're here to talk about. But that Thrawn novel, though. So good. I haven't started it so yet, good. but I'm really excited. It's Today's Collider TV <laughs> talk is going to be real page turner, guys. Real page turner. All right, Sinead, what's first? All right, so Stephen King's story, The Mist, Spike's newest original series, yes, Spike, released its first trailer a few days ago, and it already has close to 3 million hits on YouTube alone. The series will debut on June 22nd on a channel and network not really well known for its original programming. So, Emma, what did you think of the trailer, and what would you like to see from Spike? I mean, this is a very bizarre choice for Spike. To me, this says they're maybe trying to go in a completely different direction with their programming, because by and large, what we see on Spike is, like, dudes talking about stuff and, like, James Bond marathons. So mm. I'm very interested to see how The Mist will do on that channel. Because again, I don't think that like the Stephen King horror kind of stuff is really their demographic. Also like two dudes kiss in the trailer, which I wouldn't necessarily think was, you know, a, a like spike kind of thing. I mean, one of them punches the other in the face immediately afterwards, but I, I'm i just confused as to what this is doing on Spike. Yeah, <laughs> I'm with you. I don't, listen, I watched Blue Mountain State because my buddy he, he, I watched the first season. My buddy did the Beer show. Beer pong and boo. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the show was so silly. There were like actually a couple funny parts in the show, but for the most part, it was it was absolutely silly. And like most shows about college and fraternities and football and stuff like that, they take it to a level that it doesn't ever go. It's just like, we're going to be the most True. insane we can be because this is how it works. It, it doesn't work like that, and that's the reason why fraternities are getting shut down across the country. Anyway, regardless of that, this looks silly. Uh, <laughs> you sound like Ross. That is so silly. <laughs> you know what Evan said I'm yes, talking about? <laughs> yes. Uh, I, the Mist is... First of all, it's not any relation to the video game, which scared me just to like watch the video game. Uh, and I'm, I get scared about this stuff anyway. But this show on Spike, I can't imagine... Maybe Spike is going to blow our minds and do mm -hmm. something different. Yeah. Maybe. But for the most part... If I, I just don't see how this show was going to get any traction on Spike, David. I don't. It's weird because the movie was so good too. I love yeah. it. It was this nice, tight, self-contained movie, and it worked perfectly. I thought. You know, we got to see uh, Sam Witwer was in there. You know, yes, and he, he was. He was at the yeah. movie trivia showdown yeah. uh, at the Star Wars celebration. So it was cool seeing him there. But just think about that. I don't know. How do you? Is this like we're going to go season two? We're going season three? Like how long is the mist going to be around? Right. Maybe there's more mists. Plural. <laughs> <laughs> That's a word. Um, different, different kinds yeah, different of kinds of mist. I mean, mist is this going to be the mist is going to get out of the state of Maine. What worries me is it's going to be like the Walking Dead of mist. Yeah. <laughs> the mist is coming. It's everywhere. It stays. Yeah. Like, it's always foggy all it's the time. It's always foggy. Our yeah. vitamin D levels are going just mm -hmm. through the floor. Yeah. And that movie is so creepy, and the ending is, if you haven't seen it, see it. It's it's awesome. It's such okay. a crazy... T you ever seen it? Yeah. No. no. I have, oh, sorry, I you don't like the horror. No That's all right. Yeah. Anything about this property. It's good. You see, watch the movie, Sinead. Watch yeah. the movie. Is the actual villain, like, mist. evaporated air? <laughs> no, it's not, not like that. No, that was the fog. Remember yeah, the, yeah, the fog? The fog, yeah. The fog, hiding in the mist. You have to watch it. Yeah. I, I don't, the actual like villain alone. is condensation. Okay, yeah. when you come over to Rita Harrison, you're going to have to watch well, it with me because I can't watch as it. As a young man growing when I was in Michigan, uh, we had fog delays. Fog's a serious uh, thing. Yeah. We'd have like a two-hour fog delay. Yeah. You don't mess uh, with the fog. Dang. In Chicago, same thing. 
Yeah, mist is rough. In the Midwest, David, it's rough. Another helpful hint from David Griffin. Don't mess with the fog, people. The fog is a serious thing. All right, Shane, what's next? <laughs> Amongst all the action at Star Wars Celebration this weekend, fans were told by Dave Filoni, creator of the show, that the fourth season of Star Wars Rebels would, in fact, be the final mm. season. David, you were there. What else can you tell us? Oh, man. There were so many emotional moments in Star Wars Celebration from Mark Hamill's tribute to Carrie Fisher. I mean, there was just so many emotions. This was one of the highlights as well. Dave Filoni coming out with the cast, announcing that this will be the final season of Star Wars Rebels, saying there are other projects in the works. Of course. But he wanted to focus. This is a celebration. This is a Star Wars Celebration. This is celebrating 40 years of what is current now. Yeah. So no Han Solo movie, no whatever the next project is. So we got Star Wars Rebels. We also got the first episode. You saw the first episode. So the first episode. Oh, there's how was it? Yeah, there's a review up. Uh, Mark Ellis and I reviewed it for the Schmoes. I believe Christian and Ken reviewed it for Collider. So check those reviews oh, out. Oh, dang. I know. So I won't, I'm not going to spoil anything. Don't worry. Uh. But the first episode is called The Heroes of Mandalore Part 1. <laughs> so you know we got a Sabine episode. And you know we're going to Mandalore. <laughs> Woo! It was good, people. <laughs> um, uh. All good news. This is the final season. The trailer's fantastic. I think we're in for a real treat. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure you saw the trailer. I what did, did you, th yeah. what did you think oh, of the trailer? Oh, my God. I, I saw it like early in the morning it was like I woke up and it was the first thing I did was like watch that trailer and I'd like just come off a really emotional episode of Pencils and Parsecs the Star Wars show I do at Hyper RPG the night before and I woke up and I watched this trailer and I just was like crying just mm. sobbing tears it looks so good I'm so excited but I I think it's good that this is gonna be the final season of Rebels yeah. because they're at a point where they're getting real close to Rogue One. Mm -hmm. And even though Dave Filoni said it's not necessarily going to end specifically with Rogue One, we're clearly approaching the end of this tale. So I, I just think it's going to be a beautiful, emotional journey. And I don't know if my heart can handle it, but and I'm on board. We do have a Twitter question coming up at the end of the show about oh, cool. okay, Star nice, Wars, awesome. the Star Wars world and television yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Uh, because I, I personally never watched... Star Wars Rebel, uh, Rebels. That, but I also say, Josh, I loved watching your re review and critique of the new Last Jedi trailer. Yeah. It is fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> it is great. I love it. Yeah, I know you're, you like Star Wars. I do. I'm a Star you, you, Wars fan. You're not going to go home and read Thrawn? Of course not. But you like Star Wars, though. Yes. Yeah. I, uh, I love the movies. I, I thought Rogue One was fantastic. Sinead and I talked about it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Rogue One was fantastic. I really love Force Awakens. And listen, I can find the good in the prequels. Right. Uh, and yeah. I can also find the bad. But I, I, and I, you know, the New Hope was... my. We have... The three copy of the VHS, like yeah. the originals, mm -hmm. you know, that my dad bought us when we were kids. Yeah. And so, but I'm not like to the level of you guys uh, that know so much about right. planets and books and sure. all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I go into the movie, I love what I see, and they're like, did you see the Easter egg with so-and-so? I'm like, I don't know what no. you're talking about. But <laughs> I love the movie. Yeah. So, uh, mm -hmm. but I, I do like that he came out, this is the final season. We're getting close to Rogue One because now they can explore mm -hmm. other properties. Agreed. Awesome. You know what he said? Just to say real quick, just because we talk about shows, talk about season lengths. I know sure. a lot of people get defensive about Walking Dead. Like, oh, it should go forever. Um, Filoni said he loves when he can end a show on his own terms. Sure. Yes. Breaking Bad ended on his on Vaughn's own terms. Highest ratings ever. They ended it. Spartacus. They gave him a three season contract. He's like, I need one more season. We're done. Yeah. I love showrunners who have yeah. the guts to end a show when they're right, not just to try to make as much money as they can. Exactly. You know? I love that. And so I mean, I with with Clone Wars, mm. like. Filoni didn't get to end that. It just yeah. ended. They, yeah. they cut him off a, mm -hmm. a couple seasons short of what he wanted to do. So I think that this is a good move on his part to go, you know what? I know I can definitely do one more season. I'm going to do one more season, and I'm going to wrap it up the way that I want to because that's so, so important with this story, yeah. especially because these are all original characters that mm -hmm. we're focusing on for the most part. So we we want to know like what happens to them. Yeah, so. agreed. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Shane, what's next? When the seventh episode of Big Little Lies aired, HBO said, and now the series finale. But that may not be the case. The writer of the show and the author of the novel said there is room for more from the original novel and even said that they have some ideas for what a season two would look like. Obviously, there's no word from any of the stars of the show other than Reese Witherspoon smiling at Josh at the Clippers game last week. I'm so sure. <laughs> Josh, would a season two make sense? Uh, yes, she did smile at me, Sinead. Well, smile oh. like in my general direction. Sure. It was pretty sweet. I think. <laughs> Uh, just, just say, just say, go with the original story. Yes, Way better. yes. Um, here's the thing. I read after. First of all, a lot of people thought, "Oh, the season finale. I can't. What? What? What are they going to wrap up? What aren't they?" I was mm -hmm. like, "No, no, no. You guys, this is a series finale." A lot of casual TV viewers thought that this was going to be a second season or even a third mm -hmm. season. And the way they ended, Big Little Lies, 
it has a little bit of a window open for what a season two could look like and what happens with the police and da 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 da, da. and in the novel bonnie the wife zoe kravitz mm -hmm. has a much bigger role in and she doesn't have that big of a role in the show so that's what they're saying that season two could look like i would like to see maybe what a season two look like but I think, and I said this last week, someone, people are, or two weeks ago, people kind of attacked me. What about the Night Of? Night Of was much better than Big Little Lies. I thought Night Of was great. It was an amazing, amazing miniseries, but it didn't wrap up uh, and give you the satisfaction that Big Little Lies did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's why I like Big mm -hmm. Little Lies a little bit more. That being said, I think one season is good for me. However, it was so good, I wouldn't mind seeing two. Yeah, it depends on what you do. I mean, shows like, especially Fargo, yeah. mm -hmm. has proven you can stretch a story out by telling different stories set in the same kind of Coen Brothers-esque universe. Sure. You don't have to focus on the movie, also with Leftovers. Yeah. yeah. You know, you can have a story that's wonky and weird, and like the, it's going past the books and doing different things than the books did, doing its own thing, it's a beautiful thing. Even Game of Thrones, Yeah. the writers are kind of crafting their own story, wrapping it around George R. R. Martin so they get to the same conclusion. Yeah. Right. So that shows that if they have this story, that's the thing, if they have a good story, just like True Detective Season 2, don't rush it. Yeah, right. yeah. If there's a good story to tell, and there's one there that's gonna be compelling, tell it, if not, scrap it or wait for a while. Sure. HBO doesn't need to rush. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and I and I like that, you know, with Big Little Lies you have a series that does it wraps up in a way that is totally satisfactory. However, as you say Josh, like if there is kind of that thread open to potentially have a season two. Mm -hmm. it, it's sort of a win-win situation of like, if there is a season two, cool. There's definitely some other stories you can tell if there's not a season two. Also cool because we got a very satisfying story. Agreed. Mm -hmm. There you go. Well said. All right, Shane, mm -hmm. what's next? Keanu Reeves, who has battled everything from agents in the Matrix to the entire Russian mob in John Wick, will be heading to pop in a new series titled titled Swedish Dicks, Private Investigators. I just put that in to make you say dicks again. Really? It's real, it's real. Oh. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> we got well, a pained look on Keanu's face. You do know that's <laughs> my favorite word. <laughs> Okay, so Swedish Dicks, Private Investigators, Private Investigators centers on an aging stuntman alongside a Swedish DJ and their newly formed agency that handles the strangest cases that LA has to offer. Reeves will be a recurring character in the series and it marks his first major recurring role on TV. Even if you can sort of count rain. Emma, will this show drive traffic to pop? I'm gonna boldly say yes because Keanu Reeves, I mean, he's such a, he's a like Nick Cage type, you know what I, I mean? I was going to say that he has the same kind of appeal yeah, that Nick Cage has. Exactly, where it's like, oh, this guy is ridiculous. I need to see him. what he does. Like yeah. for me, I, I'm totally curious to watch this myself. So I think absolutely yes. Yeah, I, <laughs> and again, this is like Spike, right? What have we seen on Pop? Again. No, there isn't yeah. much. I mean, I've, I've auditioned for that network a couple times because okay. they were doing a lot of like unscripted kind millennial. of like, yeah. yeah, host millennial talk showy type shows. Sure. And I've been to that studio. It's fantastic. Like, yeah. They have a well, lot of money by, over there. It's owned by CBS. Mm -hmm. And CBS, uh, I was reading this really interesting article in, in Variety about, you know, streaming services and cord cutters and channels and traffic on actual traditional TV, mm -hmm. terrestrial TV mm -hmm. channels here in America. Um, and how there are some channels that are getting like 100,000 views a day. That's it. Like TV, television channels mm -hmm. are getting that much. Jeez. And and you can still sell ads on those. <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. Now a channel like Pop, which is owned by CBS, obviously has a much bigger backing. And there are certain channels, like there are certain Viacom has so many channels yeah. that they're spread so thin that they're, they're shuttering certain things simply because the streaming service is taking a lot away and you're not pr producing content or providing content to people that want to actually mm -hmm. get to it. Yeah. And we've, you know, we finally have sort of survived the reality boon and we're actually getting quality reality television, you know, like hosted stuff that people want to watch. Sure. Pop, on the other hand, now is is really going after some name talent, obviously with Counter Reeves and, and a lot of their other channels or a lot of their other programming set and slated. Pop is really trying to make a dive at the market and mm -hmm. and good for them. Make take the risk. And like you said, Keanu Reeves, listen, if it had not been for John Wick, I think Keanu Reeves would be somewhere in the middle. Sure. But with John Wick, he's made this I I mean yeah. the Keanu sense yeah. uh mm -hmm. has been awesome. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm on board. Pop yeah, I think people are realizing that good television sells. You know, The Walking Dead when it first came out, excellent. You know, it's yeah. you know, it's still going. Uh, yeah. Game of Thrones, <laughs> excellent. <laughs> yeah. uh, people want to watch good television, and they'll yeah. they'll they'll spend a lot of time and effort streaming, mm -hmm. binging, catching up on it. So of course they want to get into this. They want to make a good quality program. What better way than use Keanu Reeves, like you said, who's hot right now? Yeah, and their the shows are so weird. So like, 
Not I've never weird in the Bobby. sense that it's bad. It's just all over the place. Over the place. So like yeah. they have Hollywood Darlings, which is that new show with mm-hmm. Jodie Sweetin, right? Yeah. And oh, Beverly yeah. Mitchell. Christine Lakin. Yeah, my yeah, friend, yeah. Christine like Lakin. Like all the She's girls great. from our, my childhood. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. Dawson's Creek they play. Beverly Hills 90210 they play. That 70s Replays. show they play. Yeah. And then all of a sudden on Thursday nights, it's Impact Wrestling Night. Yeah. <laughs> so well, interesting. Well, that's sort of like USA. Yeah. USA has Suits and Mr. Robot and then uh, yeah. Monday Night Raw, right? Yeah. Yeah, Monday Night Raw and the SmackDown thing, I think, too. Whatever. So uh, bizarre. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's all over the place. But hey, mm-hmm. if you they can, play if, Charlie's Angels the movie a lot on that channel, so maybe yeah. this kind of show works perfectly. Full Throttle, the second one. They play. Like, I just looked at the schedule. <laughs> I think they're they're doing a double feature. Tonight. Oh, dang! Nothing says bad acting with Lucy Liu and Drew Barrymore. Hey, to get the old. I love that movie. <laughs> oh, get out of town! <laughs> all right, let's go into superhero rundown time. Other program where we talk about all the things going on in the superhero world. Obviously, the DC shows are sort of on this mini hiatus until next week. So we got some news stories. Sinead, what's up? Superman, played by actor Tyler Hecklin, will return for the final, or the season finale of Supergirl on the CW. No word on plot details just yet, but if the early part of the season is any indication, Superman will be a welcome return to the series. So David, you gonna check out Superman's butt or what? <laughs> I am comfortable enough with myself sexually that I can admire <laughs> another man's Giant rear. ass. His mm-hmm. yeah. sweet, sweet bottom. And not feel weird about it or have nightmares. Um, yeah. Yes, no, no, I could definitely wanna check this out. I think, I think we're gonna get an announcement at Comic-Con that he's going to get his own series. You think? I think that's happening. Can they afford that? They could afford it. Okay. I think can CW, the CW will get... afford another spin-off hit? No, 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 no. Like, can they afford Superman? Like, the actual oh. property, money-wise. Oh, that's a good I point. Think so. So I mean, I think expensive. Warner Brothers wants to build up their brand enough that they'd be willing to do it. Because the CW, people really respect the CW shows. Yeah, yeah. I think they, they do. Would, I think they would give it to them. Even yeah. if it was, like, an eight-episode yeah, anthology I, in the middle of the season. It doesn't have to be, like, a, I, a big, like, yeah, a 22-episode yeah. season. And I think that's what I would want to see out of it. Because I, I've actually really, really enjoyed the way that they've utilized Superman in the season of Supergirl, mm-hmm. where it's like, they just kind of sprinkle him in here and there, remind us that we're in the same universe, they're cousins, they yeah. have similar powers, but like, it's still her story. But I definitely wouldn't mind seeing him get like, a little, a little mini series, like yeah. see what mm-hmm. see what's going on mm-hmm. with, with Superman in our, <laughs> in our DC TV universe world. But I don't think he needs like a whole, 26 yes, yes. season Agreed. of a show. I mean, the well, CW is doing Black really well. There. I keep forgetting yeah. Black Lightning yeah. Yeah. this year too. CW is so. doing so well. They've really found like their thing. So yeah. They have their own Justice League. Yeah. Yeah, yeah why not? Why not? Why not, Josh? I, I'm not saying not. I'm saying let's do it. Okay. Right on. Let's do it. <laughs> Shay, what's next? Stephen Amell, a.k.a. Arrow, a.k.a. the Green Arrow, a.k.a. something else, <laughs> <laughs> tweeted out the iconic picture of Deathstroke's oh, mask yeah. with an arrow through it with the caption, Desperate times call for desperate measures. Josh, is Deathstroke a welcome addition to the finale and team? Dude, if you're going to make this season, if you're going to wrap it up, and he needs some help with Prometheus, he reaches out to his old mm-hmm. buddy, you know, Manu Bennett's in for, the, uh, in for the ride. This gets me pumped. Um, yeah. Yeah. Deathstroke is still, mm-hmm. I mean, that arc that is my favorite. And yeah. the fact that we're probably not going to get Deathstroke in the movie, when I say probably like the Batman movie sure. in ahead, and this is our yeah. only Deathstroke for now, I'm fine with it. Yeah, and I, I also feel like, too, as you say, Josh, it was such a strong arc, and Arrow tends to sometimes be all over the place, mm-hmm. so I feel like this would just be a nice place to kind of bring everything back together and have a really satisfying conclusion to 100%. the season. 100%. Yeah. I think. He's awesome. <laughs> yeah. yeah, also too, if, you, if you've been missing Mr. Man, you've been like, where is he? Yeah. Check out a nice little show called The Shannara Chronicles oh. on MTV. <laughs> he is one of the lead actors in The Shannara Chronicles. Okay. He's coming back for season two. That's where he's been. And you nice. watched The Shannara Chronicles. I did it. I watched the whole season. Tell me about these Chronicles of Shannara. The Chronicles of Shannara. Because as soon as I hear Chronicles, I think book and I turn. Well, the, pro- the, problem is I, the problem is I can't watch is Pan's kind of Lab. I can't watch Pan's <laughs> Labyrinth anymore. It's just, it's too much. <laughs> Because Ivana Bakar is in it, the little girl, little cute Ophelia, like little like you know ten year old uh-huh. Ophelia. Uh-huh. And, 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 now, and yeah, no, 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 she's in the movie. Oh, no, in the movie, right, but right. she's movie. on. But now she's on Shannara Chronicles. Chronicles. She's uh-huh. all like sensual and being like sexy and seductive. I'm just like it just MTV, bothers right? me. right? Yeah, it bothers yeah. me. I can't watch it anymore. Uh, it disturbs me. So you can't go back to watch Pan's Labyrinth. I can't watch Pan's Labyrinth, but you... I can watch Shannara Chronicles. Okay. It's okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> and Harrison, as you will know, in Pan's Labyrinth, as you get older, women become sexually attractive, and you're going to find it. Oh, hey, Sinead. Hey, Sinead. Yeah. This is book time with D. Griff. <laughs> oh, man. I, uh, I, here's the thing, too, is the fact that they're teaming up, this could maybe launch into season six. I hope so. It depends. I don't know what's going on with Shannara Chronicles, but if his schedule allows, I hope man. he can show up more. Oh, this is coming back, too. I know. We're getting this Al Ghul. That's Katrina true. Law, because she was on the show with the sadly, yeah. you know, Bill Paxton uh, left us, but uh, yeah. he was on. The sh- is that show got? That show got it's canceled. Gone, no, it's yeah. gone. Okay. Um, training day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
CBS. <laughs> Most watched network. Mm -hmm. uh, with Pop now taking Keanu Reeves, they're just going to crush. All right, Sinead, oh. what's next? Frank Castle looks to be fitting into the Punisher character well. He appeared on Twitter this week with the chest plate and white skull logo we all know and love, and it is working. So, Emma, thoughts on the set photos? I mean, John Bernthal as Frank Castle in Daredevil Season 2 was just the best thing about Daredevil Season 2. So, I, I mean, I'm stoked. Uh, it just... One of the things that I think the Marvel Netflix series do really well over, say, like the films is they actually have these really interesting sort of middle of the road. Are they villains? Are they not kind of characters? Mm -hmm. And and I just I I need more Punisher 100 yeah, percent. I, I need after Iron Fist that we need a little. Yeah, yeah. Some Punisher and dude just shoots people. Yeah, you know what I I mean? yeah. we need we need that darkness in our lives in the in the Marvel Netflix. I think too. shooting's rad. So I want to give a shout out real quick. I uh, met a lot of great fans of Star Wars Celebration. One cool. of those was a stunt. Man who works for Marvel, he's based in New York. He does all the Marvels, all, oh, all, cool. all the shows. His name is Victor Plagius, okay. or Plagius, sorry for mispronouncing that. And he said that uh, Bernthal is one of the hardest workers there. Yeah. So he'll come that. in offset while he's in his makeup with gaseous blood dripping down, and he'll just be like, "I'm getting a pump in real quick. I want to get a pump." Like he said, he's one of the hardest workers there. He's fun to work with. So I'm really excited to see Punisher because he's giving it his all. Yeah, Love that's exciting. That. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm gonna get a pump. Yeah, <laughs> give me a pump. <laughs> um, yeah, I, there's just something. Uh, and Punisher has always been my favorite comic book character. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the fact that he's finally getting a show, because really and truly, there hasn't been a great Punisher movie. I like the Ray Stevens mm -hmm. one. It's fine. I even enjoyed the Dolph Lundgren one. It's fine. Mm -hmm. But none of them have been like the breakout. Thomas Jane had one, yeah, too. Yeah, Thomas yeah. Jane sure. had one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is, and again, after, after Aluminum Boy, uh, we need a... Uh, Aluminum Boy. Aluminum Shame. Boy. Uh -huh. That's Iron Shame. Fist. Yeah. Oh, Aluminum, Aluminum uh, yeah. finger. <laughs> <laughs> Ceramic punch. Somebody came up to us at Star Wars Celebration and said, hey, you know, David, I want to let you know, could totally agree with your Iron Fist review. Oh, oh cool. nice. The review you and Jeff and I had, that was pretty rough. They, were, yeah. they agree with us. Yeah, That's that was, awesome. Yeah. Win one for the gift. That was pretty rough. All right, Sinead. Yes, sir. Let's talk some Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Agents think? of S.H.I.E.L.D. Um, I think it's great. It's I'm really good. liking it. So let me think. I just watched this yesterday. So um, spoiler alerts up yeah, on the screen. Yeah, spoiler. There we go. Um, okay, so... <laughs> Interesting to me is that it kind of seems like when I when I was watching the episode, it kind of seemed like everyone was getting on board really quickly. Like that too quickly. Yeah, too quickly. Coulson was like, he doesn't know where he is, but he somehow trusts and believes. And that's a problem Gemma. always with alternate universe storylines. Right, because they need they need people to be on their level, otherwise mm -hmm. the story's not gonna move anywhere. Yeah. Um so that to me was a little unrealistic. But then the, juxtapos the, the juxtaposition between those characters and um, uh, Fitz. Yeah, and Madam Hydra. Is strong enough for me to be 100% on board with this storyline yeah. because Fitz is not backing down. No, he's a freaking megalomaniac. Yeah, he's, a he's not backing down. He is completely 100% brainwashed by Madam Hydra. Also, I think it's really cool that they made her Madam Hydra and not just Ada in this framework. And I gotta say that the woman who is playing Madam Hydra and Ada, I should know this actress's name. Unfortunately, I am ill-prepared host. Um, mm -hmm. She, I thought her as, as like she's a fantastic actress. Yeah, she really is. The fact that she is doing both those roles so differently mm -hmm. and so well, she is, I mean, in that world, she is the character I'm most into seeing because she's yeah. evil, she's kind of, you know, yeah. and she, she knows what's going on because right. she, she plays both worlds. Right, right, right. She is the middle in between this whole thing. So in order for them to get out of this parallel world, they have to somehow infiltrate the mind of Madame Hydra. Mm -hmm. And they're, it's a, you're working an uphill battle. And we were looking at, like I talked about it last week, we, we I loved Ghost Rider. We loved Ghost Rider, and then we kind of took a dip with the robots. But now that we're in like in Hydroland, yeah, awesome. no, it's good. And I also am really curious to see like what happens next. Now, yes, um, what was I going to say? Shoot, <laughs> I was listening so intently to your <laughs> review. <sighs> Damn okay. it! Mallory Jansen is the name of the actress that plays uh, Ada and Madame Hydra. Um, yeah. Oh, I was gonna say with Mac, with Mac joining, his, I liked, I liked that. Like with the the little girl. Plus, we really feel for him because we know that his daughter has always been super important, and the mm -hmm. fact that he lost his daughter. I loved the way that they did that, where he, they set him up. Yeah. Um, without explaining too much, they didn't even hint at the idea that they were they were suspicious of Daisy, which right. I liked. Mm -hmm. They kind of like threw it right at us. But as soon as he said. As soon as she said, he, he was like, we're both um, S.H.I.E.L.D. agents. 
I was like, dude, they're setting, they're setting her up. As yeah. soon as that happened, I was like, there's no way. There's no way they're setting her up. But I liked how he came back and he's like, I'm here to help. That was a cool way to get the team back together without them just going and being like, you have to believe me. And then Colson being like, all right. Like yeah. something in my mind has said something about Tahiti. Maybe so Colson is the weakest in this alt world uh, that I'm, and I'm like trending towards that. But I really think that the the Max storyline was was fantastic. And the one thing I did like w that I've noticed about these two episodes, we haven't seen anybody use a superpower. There's been no, no hu because, inhumans because they can't because they can't in the framework. They or can't in the framework. Can they? We just haven't seen it. I know. Like, where is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I was mm. thinking, and when I was watching yesterday, I was thinking, oh, she's like she's gonna quake it out right now. Like something's mm -hmm. gonna happen. But they just beat her up. So yeah. that kind of changes things too. The only reason I think that they have Coulson playing the weakling and like the one that's just kind of like following the rules yeah. is because he is the natural born leader yes. so it's kind of an interesting flip like everyone's kind of flipped a little bit right 100 oh, yeah 100%. like max always pretty like hard on the surface and he's kind of like this is happening whatever 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 we need to do this we need to do that and this time around he's got like such a like a, such a soft spot I know. Fitz is like 100 percent opposite uh -huh. and they keep changing his character too which i really love yeah me too you know? and i like that every time Ward says something about Daisy and Gemma's just Gemma's like, just like, oh yeah, you of all people. Yeah, right. I, I really like that that mm -hmm. dynamic. But it's cool. I really it. liked last yeah, night's episode. Yeah, me too. I mean, not last. I watched this week. Yeah, night, it's, yeah, it's been a real nice. I, I'll tell you Change. what, Agents of Shield this season mm -hmm. has done a beautiful job of weaving like three separate storylines with an overarching storyline. Even though we, I feel like we're gonna get Ghost Rider coming back at some point mm -hmm. in this before the season Something is over. Something is happening with him regardless, like one way or another. Yep. I was telling you guys at WonderCon, they had a special thing set up for him that was like, come meet Ghost Rider. Yep. And I just don't think that was a couple months after the season had ended. I just don't think they would put the money and time into marketing mm -hmm. and yeah. press <clears throat> for something if they weren't planning on utilizing him again. Yep, I agree. I'd love to see him in the Marvel. I would love yes. to see him yeah. anything in the Marvel Netflix. Yeah, He's TV. fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. All right. Let's go into uh, the pilot review this week. We're doing the White Princess on Stars. This was totally in David's wheelhouse. Uh, <laughs> did this? I was, you know, like I don't want to watch this. This is whatever. But I was because I'm like, oh, this is one of these David Outlander shows. Whatever. Those are good shows. This show yeah. is bad ace. I like this yeah. show a lot. It was, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I mean, obviously, this first episode did a lot, kind of just setting up the actual history of mm -hmm. what was mm -hmm. going on at this time period in England. I mean, basically you have got Henry Tudor, Henry the seventh has, you know, somehow ascended to the, the, the thing is about Henry Tudor is he had so little claim on the throne. It was unbelievable that he mm -hmm. ended up being the king. And yeah. so basically you, you know, you have the Yorks that were, you know, big supporters of the people that were in power. And so now there's this war going on between the Yorks and the Tudors, but they're looking to end that by marrying Elizabeth of York off to Henry Tudor. Right. Yeah. And wait, was Ooh. Henry Tudor in the Tudors? Because I never watched. Yeah, but that was Henry no, VIII, that's though. His, that that's, his, that's their son. Yeah, that's their, their son, son, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, yeah, that's Henry VIII. Okay. So that's yeah. the next one. Um, yes. So if you're wondering, like, what the heck is the White Princess? Where did the show come from? Uh, it came from the White Queen. Yeah. Uh, with with uh, Rebecca Ferguson, which is fantastic. So yep. you're seeing Rebecca Ferguson's character is there. She's just older. They've yep. aged her up. So she's the mom yep. of the now uh, Queen Elizabeth. And um, it, so it's very it's good. It's literally she's in it. No, uh, no, 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 not no, anymore. She's played by a different but actress. Different oh, actress. I see, I see. Yeah, they, they, they aged her. I'm, I'm sure she's really they busy right now. They look very similar. They do. Actually. They have the yeah. same reddish hair. Wow, and they're all... She the reminds me of are... somebody you'd marry. I'm not. I'm oh going to be gosh. real honest. Yeah, <laughs> and goodness. I picture them like sitting down to dinner. I know. And David's cooked like a, <laughs> a roast. roast. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. Yes. So good. I mean, so good. If, if Jody, yeah, if Jody Cumber came over to my house, I would definitely, I, I, I would, I would take care yes. of her. Yeah, I would be a gentleman. Oh, would, would with some fine wine, some mead. Yeah, some mead. Yeah. Yeah, some mead. I mean, He's I would funny. take care of her. That is one of those two pronged forks with a long. I mean, when, yes. I mean, I mean, when that douche Henry the Seventh looked at her and be like, I don't want to be with her. You do not look at that girl and be like, eh, I don't want her. Really, yeah. bro. Really? Yeah. Come well, on. And it was so interesting too. I actually think one of the things, and this is a, a spoiler, I guess, uh, <laughs> that I that I really appreciated that they did in this show was they took what was shaping up to be a rape scene. That's the number one article right now. Yeah, turned it on its yeah. head mm -hmm. because basically he was like, he's like, 
I'm not going to marry you unless I know that you're fertile. So, like, as soon as you get pregnant, then fine, whatever, I'll marry mm -hmm. you. Because he doesn't want to get married to her because he thinks, and it is implied that this is indeed the case, that she was sleeping with the previous king mm -hmm. uh, whom she was in love with. And so... And they were definitely banging because you saw, like, the little montage at the beginning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but they... But anyway, so it was this really interesting scene where, like, he was coming on really strong to her. And instead of it being him forcing himself on mm -hmm. her, and obviously, like... She didn't necessarily want to, but she understood why she had to. And so she turns it right back on him and she's like, fine, let's get it no. over with. And if you wonder yeah. too, Josh, just in case I know you didn't see, you haven't watched The White Queen. I, no, I the, there, there's there's definitely a, I'll just say there's a magical element. I don't go too much more into that. But uh, the, um, Rebecca Ferguson's character, her mother in this series, uh, teaches her those magical properties. Got it. So we see some of the so that magic. That Mandrake scene. The ma yeah. yeah. So that, 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 that's why I see some of that magic going on right in there. On. So yeah. it's, a, it's historical fiction. There's yeah. history, I mean, but it's, it's historical it's, fiction. It's yeah. based on the books by Philippa Gregory, right. who yeah. wrote like Other Bolin Girl. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, she, she yeah. takes some liberties with history. Definitely some liberties, yeah. yeah. She loves a good period piece. But it's I'm beautiful. I'm surprised the Keira Knightley yeah. isn't in I mean, here. Uh, well, the costumes are not very historically accurate, no. but they're beautiful costumes. Everybody, people are cleaner... Like, I just took a shower. Yeah. These people look better than I do. Yeah. I'm like, how are you keeping that clean? Yeah. No, so and also, clean. and also, like, the women would have never had their hair uncovered like no, that. Right, like, yeah. they would have been oh, totally really? covered. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm, so. Interesting. <laughs> this I didn't know. Josh, you see, when you watch these shows, you learn about history. I do. Yeah. I, yeah. And that's what I do like about it. I also <laughs> like the fact that Catelyn Stark and Rob Stark are back together. Yes. To get <laughs> yeah. the show. Except because it's he's, not actually Rob Stark. That is uh, Jacob, sure Jacob like Collins Levi. It looks a little bit. Levy. Sorry, Levy. cousin on his mom's side. Yeah. It's got to be. They're like told those dudes maybe, look so maybe they like, yeah. like, oh yeah, we're totally related. Yeah, yeah. Duh. And uh, but I, I was thinking you were like, can you imagine in today's world if there's guys like, listen, I really like you, okay, and I think we're great together, but I have to test if you're fertile. <laughs> I would, well, I it's no big deal. It's no big deal. Straight up punch them in the And I will also say one another thing that I like kind of weirdly liked was that so basically like when when they sleep together, he's like, Oh, I thought about your sister Cecily. It made it really easy to like <laughs> Get mm -hmm. hard yeah, that it. was. I feel like in, but but then Cecily like shows up in his room and is like, "Let's bone," and yeah. he's like, mm, "You should be more loyal to your sister." Oh, yeah. snap! That was like this season in Walking Dead when Negan gutted the dude. That I mean, different, but <laughs> yeah, you know what but I mean. <laughs> yeah, but Negan. totally. Sister's like, "Let's bang," and he's like, "Man, you should probably take it." Yeah, that guy's right. horrible taste. I don't like him. He's a douche. <laughs> I do not like Henry the Seventh. You have a you have a thing for old Rose. Uh, yeah, <laughs> see, I, I would be that would be nice to her. Yeah, I would be <laughs> nice. <to> <laughs> <laughs> she is she is quite attractive. She they get her very bosomy for that wedding. You gotta, oh, yeah. Well, she yeah. she was oh, doing that. That, that was a dress. statement. That was a statement. That's a statement. That was dress. a statement dress. Yeah, yeah she's making mm -hmm. a statement. Definitely. Right. So yep. good. Yep. <laughs> being, being paraded in front of everybody. All is about those statement and, yeah. dresses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, we usually we go into highs and lows, which we are going into now. Usually highs and lows is a lot quicker. We have so much TV to talk about. We're gonna do some little mini reviews because we have a little bit of time here. So uh, Sinead, let's get it going. All right, you guys, Leftovers is back and swinging. <laughs> oh, my okay. goodness. I, th Cody, throw up use, a spoiler. Throw up a spoiler. Yeah. The use of music in this series yeah, know, is like the best on television. That opening scene of like the the people in the like pilgrim times. The, the like fam, the pilgrim yeah, family. Yeah, the pilgrim family. That was amazing. Yeah, that's the... I, and where does that, you know that's going to come back. Oh, it is. Somewhere. Oh, it's yeah. totally going to yeah. come back. Yeah. Because yes. obviously, like, this was a, a cult that believed in this idea of, like, you know, half of the population is going to disappear. But if you get taken, it's a good thing. Because right. you're, like, going to be with the Lord and you're going to yeah. be in heaven. And, and you see this relationship. So basically, there's this nice, like, parallel of, okay, you have all these people that believe this is going to be the case, and slowly but surely, as they don't get taken, people fall off the wagon, so you end up with only half of, like, the disciples left. It was, it was so, so mm -hmm. interesting. I think that <sighs> this show, this, this premiere of this episode kind of proved that you... This show is just unlike anything else we have on yeah. television. Yeah. Because for for whatever reason, the entire episode I kept waking thinking, he's gonna wake up and we're gonna be somewhere else. Yeah. Yes. Right? Like yeah. this isn't the world. This is not the world we're living in right now. We're yeah. in something different. Uh, you know, the beginning part with the missile from the drone was 
Unlo- I, I, I mean, who, who, yeah. that's a Lindelof thing. Yeah. I mean, that's... I love when we go back, there's just that crater. Yeah. That's yeah. still there. He's just staring there's at crater, it. There's a crater, yeah. Mm-hmm. And now he's back to his police thing. I, there is something just so eerily perfect about this episode where I'm like, everybody's too happy. Something yeah. weird's going to happen. Well, it's true because all of a sudden... Yeah, as you say, it's like it's almost like this until the end when uh, when Tommy ends up shooting the other guy in the head. It... It is almost like this very like picturesque. We're all living. Everyone's really in, happy. Yeah, we're all living in, in this denial. happy That's little funny. perfect society, and like things are great this way, and everything's gonna be wonderful. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do we? I'm. I. I, I should have watched the season two finale. I, I was gonna say that was Again. my Did, biggest regret. Yeah. What, happened, what happened to this. Regina King? I watched. Where's Regina King? We don't know. So we don't know where yeah, Regina she, King is. What happened? We don't know what happened to the little baby either. No, little baby, we don't know. Yeah, I mean, because that was part of it. And they have a new like, baby. Yeah, they, they have a new baby. Was that like they were like, oh, it's because your daughter Lily died. Lily, yeah, yeah, and it's like, but we don't Wait, know. That's not her. That wasn't her daughter well, no. that she was holding. Well, she was holding, yeah. she was the, holding the, the crazy the woman oh, who's now right. okay. okay. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, for a second I did think that was her. But 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 her adopted baby, the little black baby, is gone. Is gone. Is gone. Yeah, that's so sad. Regina King is gone. Is gone. And now he's with. The His ex-wife. ex-wife. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, which is, I'm like, whoa. Yeah. So what's happened in those three years? We may never get that explained. Well, yeah. and Lindelof has said, this is not going to be wrapped up in a nice little bow for us. No, no of course happen. not. But it's going to end. Yeah. yeah. And it's and, it, and from what I've read on certain reviews, especially Allison Keynes on, on mm-hmm. uh, Collider.com, is that it's a satisfying ending to the show. Oh, they get, okay. oh so, so they sent the critics the whole season. He, she's seen wow. it. Wow. Yeah. That's, that, that, that's, they have confidence in the show if they're doing that. Yeah. The whole yeah season. So... Here's the thing, and I, I want to get your opinion too, Sinead, on this one, mm-hmm. is that it's so off the wall, uh, this, the, the situation of him strangling himself. So do you think he kills himself every morning? Well, I, I think as he lost his faith, because remember, like, before he'd experienced all these crazy things, he had gone to the other side, as they say, sure, yeah. and yeah. died. And now he's jumping into possibly polluted waters. He's trying to kill himself. Like, is he still journeying or is he just lost? Because he's like, it's all in your head. It's all in your head. All this craziness, all these dogs, it's all in your head. Has he lost his faith, I wonder? I don't think he ever had the faith. Not faith in that, but faith in like, like I'm, you know, this this is happening to me. Something else is out there. I I don't know. Maybe maybe never had it. Maybe you're right. Maybe never had it. Yeah, I think it's a denial thing, honestly. I, I mean, it. It was so interesting to see, because I, I, I agree with you. I think, David, you brought up, like, does he kill himself every day? And I think maybe yes, but I think it's because he's trying to prove to himself that, like, maybe, yes, actually, I can die if I just try enough times. Like, this is going to end. I want to know if he keeps waking up in that hotel door. He just, like, yes. just wakes I, up, you know, in general. I don't know. Yeah. Like, where, where does he go when he dies? Know. Yeah, I don't know. Sinead, how are you feeling? Well, it's so funny because at, when the episode ended, my mom's like, I can't tell if the show is fantastic or if it's just a bunch of baloney. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, honestly, like I, I can kind of understand where she was coming yeah. from. I mean, we've been watching it since day one. Yeah. And it's so off the walls, like you said, that you don't really know what the hell is happening mm-hmm. at any point in time. And usually towards the end of the season is where things start making sense. So at this point, what we could have seen in that pilot could have been a bunch of baloney. Like yeah. we don't really know what is real and what's not. Because I kept thinking the same thing too. Like this isn't this isn't the world that they're living yeah. in. So I don't I don't know. I have no idea if, if this is the world that they're mm. living in. Um, and they I am I'm like I'm so indifferent because I want to know what happened in those three years. But mm-hmm. I agree with you. I don't think they're gonna tell us. Yeah. But things like he's back with his ex-wife in the same in the same house. And when um, the guy walked up, the the guy from Regina King's guy, whatever. Yeah. I was like, so skinny now. Yeah, I was like, Mm -hmm. I said, wouldn't it be crazy if he just like leans over and kisses her, and like that's that's gonna set up some everything we think. Yeah. And then um, we, I was thinking like maybe he's not with Nora anymore. And then I was like, nah, wouldn't it be amazing if he just leaned over and kissed her? And sure enough, he did. Like everyone's just like going about their very merry lives. Too too happy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But so I'm I don't know. And then we see Nora is like in the end is old. Yeah. And she's in sure. Australia. We know we're going there eventually. We know yeah. that. We know his dad's in Australia. Yeah. But in the, in the weeks ahead, he looks like he's young in Australia. So right. are we doing a time jump by the end of this? I mean, like, what's like, where are we going? That's yeah. the crazy it's thing. A where a we, weird all, last time we saw Nora, she went on a bike ride. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But like, like you know how he, like, you said maybe he kills himself every day? Like, mm. what if he's just living the same day over Ground and over again? Day. Like, Ground what if he's day? living the same day over and over and she has somehow discovered that leaving Miracle or wherever the hell right. they're, are they still in Miracle? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So yeah. leaving Miracle 
means that like time continues, whereas staying in Miracle, it's like you're stuck in his world. We'll talk about yeah. two that, Like I yeah. know that's super far fetched, but it just didn't make sense to me because clearly she knew that she was impersonating somebody else and she knew the name when that woman said it to her. Right. And then mm. they show him going to Australia with her and she looks different. True. So like maybe they went there at some point and realized that things were different there and so she went back there. Or maybe that's setting up what's happening because she goes, I have to go to Australia, right? And she's holding the thing. So maybe this episode was just to set up, maybe next week we're gonna fast, we're, that entire episode next week is gonna be set in Australia in the mm. present day. Yeah. Like maybe what we saw last night is the past, if that makes any sense whatsoever. I don't, well, now, we're getting a gospel, a new gospel. Yeah. We're getting oh, the, book of, the, the episode's the called book The Book of, of Kevin. Kevin. Yeah, we're yeah. getting a new gospel. Yeah. Now you're, you are a seminarian. Mm -hmm. What, you, you a lot of themes. Yeah, Lindelof loves theology. You know, yeah. I mean, him and I have a different upbringing, but I mean, he, you know, if you watch Lost, so much symbolism in there. You know, he, he loves religion. He likes to at least study the, the history of that. So you see that there's a lot of uses of seven. When Kev, when uh, Pastor uh, Matt's giving his whole thing about seven, the importance of seven, yeah. seven years, October 14th, seven years after the departure, you know, something important is going to happen. The use of seven is huge in the Bible because it's all about uh, finishing something, accomplishing something. So when seven's used, it has to do with like divine completeness, okay. basically, when something's complete or ends. So what's going to happen in, you know, yeah. October 14th, maybe a flood's coming, maybe whatever, or something's happening though on October 14th. Well, and it was also interesting, this is kind of going back to what you were saying, Sinead, of like, if you leave, is it that if you're in Miracle, you are living the same day over and over again, and if you leave, then like time continues? Because there's the whole thing with Mary like if being she like, leaves. yeah, she's like sh her saying right. like, well, Matt thinks if I leave, that like the magical spell that's been cast on me that made me come out of my coma is gonna end. If she walks out of Miracle and all of a sudden just goes, right catatonic again and there's, that, a, there's that doubt with kevin when the dog picks up that peanut oh. butter sandwich he's like oh i mean there's yeah. that doubt because he went on a journey with that guy yeah, i know yeah. i mean he experienced right. some crazy crazy right. things and yeah. he's just denying all of it awesome. yeah it's crazy all right let's move on what's Oof. next Sinead? uh doctor who premiere yeah oh man uh so this episode was called the pilot uh <laughs> it is not a pilot episode per se mm -hmm. but it is done with the intention of kind of bringing in a new group of Doctor Who fans because the last couple of seasons got really convoluted uh, mm. with the companion Clara, who was played uh, by Jenna Louise Coleman, who I like as an actress, but I did not care for her character. I thought she was better with Capaldi than she was with Matt Smith, with whom she was originally introduced. However, she was like so intricately woven into like Doctor Who mythology. And kind of the point of the companion is to be the 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 audience, like she, the companion is you. They're the person who's just normal and who you relate right. to. And so we have uh, a new companion this season played by Pearl Mackey, uh, who's named Bill. Uh, she is also the very first uh, officially homosexual companion. She is a lesbian, yeah. uh, which is um, really fun and refreshing mm -hmm. as well. Uh, even though they've, they've always been pretty open with sexuality on Doctor Who, and particularly on Torchwood, um, the spinoff series uh, with good old uh, Captain Jack. But anyway, uh, I, I, really, I really enjoyed her, it was so nice to have another like Rose Tyler type character where it's like she is just this normal girl she works at like the cafeteria basically mm -hmm. at this college she serves chips she, she makes chips. chips she's just good a, chips yeah. she's just a regular mm -hmm. girl uh and for her when she has this encounter with the doctor and the girl who she's kind of got a crush on basically gets spoilers uh like replicated by this sort of alien Space whale? engine oil <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah uh <laughs> after you know she and it's a very like traumatizing experience and basically you know she figures out that like oh the reason that this girl is pursuing me is because her last conscious thought before she got you know killed mm -hmm. and then replicated was that or, or maybe killed we're not quite sure uh <laughs> was i promise i won't go anywhere without you right. and so she's pursuing her to like bring her along uh with her on this journey this this heather replicant basically um so yeah it, it, and then at the end you know she says to the doctor who wants to erase her memories mm -hmm. uh and it was lots of callbacks to things that we've seen in previous seasons of doctor who uh you know she basically was like this is the most exciting thing that's ever happened to me in my entire life, don't don't take this away mm -hmm. from me. Um, so so again, we're we're getting a companion who like is us. Like this guy shows up and is like, I can access all of time and space. Wouldn't you want to go with him? I would. I would. I'd hang out with the with the doctor. Yeah. I, I this is like my first. 
I watched a couple episodes when sure. uh, of the uh, was Eccleston. Yeah. Matt, Pastor Matt, you know, yeah, who, who was Matt. in the leftovers. I just didn't get into it. So I was like, ah, Doctor Who's not for me. But I watched this, I just had a smile on my face. I was on the plane yeah. at like midnight, you know, traveling across the country and I just <laughs> I just had a smile on my face. I didn't really know what was going on. I don't know the characters' backgrounds, yeah. but I feel like it was welcoming to new viewers. Like yeah. you didn't have to have a rich understanding of the history. You got more out of it, I'm sure. Sure, yeah. But you could just kind of settle in and yeah. just kind of oh, enjoy a little man. forty there, five minute show. There were some really, really great uh, little things in this episode. Um, so there's two port. There's two pictures on the doctor's desk. Is that like his former wife or something like that? So River Song was his wife. Okay. Uh, that was Alex Kingston's character, mm -hmm. uh, who had a very uh, sad but happy exit. I don't know. Mm -hmm. she, she was a, she was a great character. But the other photo on the desk is of Susan, who was the very first companion in all of Doctor Who. Oh, cool. she like was way the, back in the day, she was like the in doctor's the doctor's granddaughter oh, wow. in the very in the first ep like series of episodes wow. and with susan we're under the impression that she's dead based on some conversations that happened in the in the sort of 2005 hmm. doctor who revival where mm -hmm. you know somebody says to him at one point like oh i was once a, a father and a grandfather but you know all my family's gone now and, and he says like oh yeah i can relate because you know susan his first companion was his granddaughter but we don't know for sure that she's definitely dead and we hmm. haven't directly referenced her so strongly basically ever mm -hmm. since the um, Russell Davies and now the Stephen Moffat days. So part of me is like, oh man, are we gonna see Susan come back All finally? Right. And, I, and I just kept thinking about the serial where, um, the doctor leaves Susan behind because like he like locks her out of the TARDIS. It's really emotional. It's really good. If you're going to watch an old Doctor Who serial, Dalek Invasion yeah. of Earth, really, really good. I'm glad uh, I watched it. I'm now we have to burn. All right. Uh, now sorry. we have to go. Let's go. Sinead, what's next? Better call Saul. Woo! Slow episode, but great. Every episode really of that show slow. is slow. Very deliberately paced. Yeah. yeah. But I love the Cinnabon opening. Yes. Uh, thought it was fantastic. The detail of go Mike. Liar! Like, the detail of Mike like breaking down his car, the alarms, the, the tracers. It was just, they, 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 that show is in no hurry at all. No. They're in no hurry. Uh, just every everything is so deliberate in that show, but super high. Mm -hmm. All right, Definitely. Sinead. Veep. Yeah, Veep. She's not present anymore, but God, mm -hmm. that show is just still stupid and funny. It's just like, I I watched like four or five episodes of last season leading up to this just because HBO does that marathon mm -hmm. really well. Ah, man. I need How to catch feeling? I need to catch up on it at some point. Anybody? Nobody? No, no I didn't watch Veep. Yeah. Sorry. <gasps> Sorry, I was watching Hi. Doctor Who in the Expanse on the plane. <laughs> Veep is the bomb.com. <laughs> All right, what's next, Sinead? I've always thought that this word was not pronounced the way that I thought it was. I always just think it was gorilla. <laughs> <laughs> I just remembered that in high school gorilla? one time. Yeah, gorilla. one time. It, it was gorilla, but I remember one right. time I said gorilla warfare, and everyone looked at me like I was crazy. <laughs> yeah, they're like, it's like the same as the animal. Is this, yeah. this is a South African pronunciation of it. Yeah. I just like yeah. assume Get everything that. is foreign, foreign yeah. sounding. Yeah, you know? yeah. I like well, it. I think it's in, French. In, in Spanish, it's like guerilla. Guerilla. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the yeah. double L's, yeah. Mm -hmm. So oh, this is Idris Elba. Uh, so it's a hard show to watch. Mm. Uh, Hard I, I, and like, like not it, good. It, it's dark. It's, uh, it's uh, tough. Yeah, it's about like civil it's rights. Yes. Yeah, civil uh, rights in yep. 70s England. It's it's tough. Yeah, it's tough. Okay. But um, I I'm going to watch it more. Uh, the acting in it is fantastic, as good. per usual in a no. show like this. All right, what's next, Sinead? MST3K. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, yeah, Netflix. I watched the first episode. Um, you know, I have to say, I really enjoyed it. It's not trying to reinvent the wheel. No. It's, it's a nice revival of MST3K. I thought Jonah was great. Sure. Uh, and, um, oh, why am I totally drawing a blank? Patton, Patton Oswalt. Oh, Patton Holy Oswald, moly. Yeah. He was so great. I mean, the great. cast is awesome. And yeah. my, uh, my buddy Hampton Yunt is in it. Yeah. And uh, I think that, I mean, I, I watched the first one just yeah. like you. I, I enjoyed the original series. I wasn't like a huge, huge fan. Sure. But it was sort of like Beavis and Butthead. When it was on, it was You watched funny. it. Yeah, it was, exactly. Yeah. yeah, that's how I felt about it, too. And it's not like a show where you're like, I gotta go out and binge Mystery Science Theater. No, but Let's go enjoy it's it. It's like a fun, fun thing to put yeah. on. You know what yep. it's great for? If you're like ever at a party, not at a party, if you ever like come home after partying all night and you need a show to fall asleep to, yes. or you're like high and you just want to watch something, throw on, I'm not condoning drug use. <laughs> Don't use drugs, kids, only if you're at parties. And, oh no. And, and uh, if you're, if, if you're at, and you just want to enjoy like a little, just no brainer <laughs> television, Mystery Science Theater do that. Yeah. All right, what's next? Well, Shane? that's what that stands for. Yeah, yeah. MST. Oh, I was, I was typing in MST. Oh, okay. I didn't know what it was. I, was, <laughs> I don't know what you guys were talking like about. I was a little confused. You I'm didn't like, want to ask. Yeah, I was like, I'm just going to be quiet. <laughs> David's over here thinking of roast recipes for. Uh, <laughs> I thought it was like some new sci fi show or something. <laughs> MST 3K. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. All right, Shane, what's next? All right, Feud, Betty and Joan. Okay, there's a scene in this week's episode. I know I'm the only one that's caught up on the mm -hmm. show. Yes. But there is a scene in this week's episode where 
Jessica Lang won an Emmy and she won a Golden Globe and whatever other <laughs> she TV won award. Every award. Mm -hmm. Her and and I would imagine Susan Sarandon, they're both gonna get nominated for this, but if Jessica Lang does not win for her portrayal of Joan Crawford. I would be shocked. She has totally transformed herself. I I hate her. I love her. I hate her. I just it, this show is so well done. If you guys watched it and you're like, this isn't for me. It's about white people in old Hollywood. Give it a shot because it's unbelievably well done. All right, what's next, Jane? The Outsiders have been canceled at WGN America. Tough day. Aww. It's a great show. If you guys aren't watching it, I was lucky enough to do the official after show. It's so well done. WGN America, they just had their busiest month, and they canceled it. Uh, maybe it'll get picked up somewhere else, but loved that show. Hmm. R.A.P. Outsiders. Riverdale. That I thought dance, this episode was freaking fantastic. That dance yeah. with Veronica Lodge and... Chelsea Handler. I mean, what's her? What's the girl's name? Uh, Cheryl Blossom. Cheryl Blossom. They call her Chelsea Blossom. Handler. Chelsea, Chelsea Handler. Handler. <laughs> Chelsea Handler. Nope. Uh, the old uh, host on E <laughs> over there. Oh, Chelsea yeah, Lately. Chelsea Lately. Um, oh, Chelsea Lately. Yeah, very good. The, it, I, I, and the party scene was really fun. Yeah, birthday party from hell. Yeah. yeah. Although if there's an old dude hanging out at a birthday party for longer than eight minutes that isn't a cop, kind of got to get the hell out yeah. of there. Yeah. But yeah. I kind of liked it. I think there's yeah. so many secrets that are going to start getting uncovered now. And Veronica, so, spoiler alert. Um, Veronica talks to um, Kevin, the yeah. sheriff's son, and says, you know, what's that guy doing here? Because she remembers that was the guy that was giving her mom money, which yeah. she totally mm -hmm. forgot was Skeet, Jughead's Skeet. dad. Yep. And then he's like, are you kidding? That's Jughead's dad. So I just feel like there's so many more things going on with the parents and yeah. this entire yeah. murder, every, every single mystery. So who killed Jason Blossom? I'm not sure, but when I interviewed um, <sighs> Madeline, yeah. who plays Cheryl, she said, you do find out in the second to last episode, it will blow your absolute freaking brains out. And then in the last episode, in the season finale, it kind of like ties everything up. So she says it is like a very satisfying thing, but you will 100% know who, who killed so him. So what would season two look like? Well, I mean, we're also getting a Sabrina, the Teenage yes. Witch, who's coming yeah. to Riverdale. I'm so, so excited. I think that kind of sets up and things moving forward. And next week, well, the end of this episode, I mean, you see that uh, the mom is, uh, what's her name, Molly Ringwald. Yes! I love that. I know. That right? was so, so awesome. Great. Right? Yeah, that so was so nice. perfect. And I felt like they, she just fit in with... Um, What's his face? Who I always can never remember his name. Luke Perry. Yeah, Luke Perry. Yeah, Luke Perry. <laughs> I was just like, oh, it's perf. This is perfect. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, what's next? Last week tonight. D there was this joke on there about, and the reason I put it in here is about uh, one a, a Trump person. Oh no, a French person running for French, uh, the French president said that he's like uh, they go together like uh, the big hairy man and Larry Skywalker. <laughs> Larry Skywalker. <laughs> so he, kept, he had this amazing, like, he kept coming back to Larry Skywalker and the big bear guy. Uh, really good. Last week tonight. Uh, Give it a high. Great. All right, Shane. Billions. Man, why aren't you guys watching the show? I watched I the first know. seven episodes of season one. You should be watching okay. it. Okay. I'll really watch it. There's Jeez. literally too much TV. There's a lot of TV. There's yeah. so, so much We all watch TV. different shows. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I know we all do, but What's we all love each other. Just we do. Yeah. We and all I, watch I, I, different shows. You watch all of them. Yeah. Josh watches <laughs> all of the shows. All right. Go Outlander ahead. season three teaser. Josh does not watch Outlander. He doesn't watch all the shows, Sinead. He watches the American shows. In in my history of my life. Here it comes. Okay. <laughs> I have never had a show that I couldn't get through the pilot. Wow. Like I've always wow. watched a whole pilot. I have tried to watch Is the Outlander. That bad? I have tried to watch the Outlander pilot. Dang. Even that Oz show? Four I times. You, I thought you gave up on that one. What Oz show? Like the, the HBO Oz? Uh, the prison no, show? No, the, the, oh, uh, the Wizard of Oz. The Wizard of Oz. The, no, I'm I'm watched that whole pilot. You did. Oh, I thought I, you said you. Quit. We watched the first two episodes. And then I took my DVR outside and I dunked it in the pool because <laughs> I was so angry at NBC. <laughs> Outlander, I've, again, I, I get to like the point where they're in like that wispy Scottish town and they've just had average sex in a squeaky bed. Average sex? <laughs> and you do not, you not have average sex in Scotland. Yeah, not, and not on Outlander. Like I'm Outlander is sure. average sex on a squeaky bed. Details. I, like I just, I, that sh I can't. I'm sorry. I can't get through the pilot. It's like, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Fool me six times, stop watching the show and go wow. watch something that you enjoy. Wow. But, but talk about this trailer. <laughs> So if you're a sci-fi fan, I know there's some dudes out there be like, Outlanders, that's a show for girls, man. That's a chick show, bro. No, it's a dude show as well. Yeah. There's time travel. Yeah, it's a time travel She's show. a time traveler. Yeah, it's not just if, like... When you watch the trailer, you can see there's two separate timelines. Yeah. What do, what do I have the biggest problem with in everything? Time travel and robots. What there's, no this robots. there's no robots. There's no robots. robots. Yeah. But there is time travel. But it's not, You would not like Doctor Who. <laughs> there's a lot of time travel wow. and robots. Ah, yeah. uh, All right, well, you know, I, I'm excited for Outlanders. Coming back in September, watch it. Yeah. Okay. It's a good time. There you go. Sinead. My computer died, so I'm going to be looking very closely at my phone. Uh, um, the Expanse penultimate. 
It's yeah, it's the Expanse Ultimate episode uh, aired on Wednesday. I watched that on the plane as well. I watched Doctor Who and the Expanse back to back. It was just an, two hours of sci fi goodness yeah, on, you were uh, crushing on that. Plane. Where was I? Frontier yeah. Airlines. Yeah. Oh. Don't recommend it. Um, <laughs> Frontier yeah. Airlines. Oh, I can't. Wait, that's bad. Are they a sponsor? I'm yeah. Sorry. Oh, one? crap. Sorry. You missed the whole read. Oh, no, they're sponsoring. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. special thanks to the sponsors. Yeah. Yeah. Frontier Airlines. Yeah. Animals on the tails. Right? Really? 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 I was like, why? Uh, no, it, it, it's great. It, it's it's one of the best. It's the best sci-fi show that I have seen since Battlestar Galactica. I know the first season is a little dense, a little slow. Josh, I know, is trying to catch up. Season two is just just letting loose. It's it's incredible. Season finale is going to be here in this Wednesday. Go. So All right, funny. let's burn these last four real quick. Um, okay, Bloodline teasers. Is anybody happy three. this is coming back? I, I know they you didn't need like to, last they need season. to wrap up. I think they're going to kill everybody. Okay, it looks like it. Okay. Um, yeah. The girls finale. Yeah. Say so real quick. It's funny. I watched the premiere with Riz Ahmed. Yeah. And then you watched the finale. Yes. But you and I have both seen the bookends. Right. Yeah. Nothing, nothing in the middle though. Uh, I watched the first three episodes ever of Girls, and then I got off. I did my three episode test. It failed. Uh, um, and then I was like, you know what? Everybody's talking about it. It's such a thing. I'm going to watch the finale. Right. Watching the first three episodes and watching the finale. I didn't need to watch the middle ones. I get it. Mm. <laughs> yeah. It yeah. ended how I thought it would end, yeah. and there we are. Everybody's just kind of being miserable. Yep. 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 There yep. you go. Yep. Nasty. <sighs> but to nobody's surprise, Fear of the Walking Dead has been renewed. Who's watching for a the show? Who's what? watching the show? I know. I literally. Me. Legitimately, I'm the one. You're the only person and who's I keep, watching it. I'm writing handwritten letters to AMC. Don't do this show anymore. Do something else. And what do we get? A fourth season. Yeah, more, just more. Wait, are you still? Are, are you actually caught up and like you watched everything? Yes. Um, so is it better? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> it, the only thing different between this show and the actual Walking Dead is this one: you're in the water, yeah. and Walking Dead, you're in the forest. <laughs> are they still in the water? They're at a beach resort. That's not a bad place to be in the zombie apocalypse. Were they on the They were on a boat. Yeah. Weren't they on the boat? What was the boat? That was the boat. That's still like boat beach resort. One. Yeah. No, the, the airplane one was a web series. Oh, my goodness. Oh. About like the beginning of the apocalypse. And if you're on a plane and then a zombie. Oh, that was, that that was the web. That's right. That was the oh, web yeah. series. Oh, yeah. yeah. Weird. Okay. Attack on Titan. Dope. Yeah, it was great. Dope. Uh, Dope. Yeah. The, you know, we basically got confirmation that, yes, uh, the wall is indeed made out of like hardened titan skin so there's probably just a whole bunch of titans in the walls yeah there's titans uh, in the walls yeah yeah and also apparently krista has some very big role to play in mm -hmm. all of this i would have thought it was ymir because she is kind of more of a like tough character than krista mm -hmm. is but i'm very curious to see so they're all kind of racing to get to her everybody wants Aaron in titan form to like repair the wall yeah. where the breach is so yeah so good. Watch, yep, yeah, watch really Attack good. on Titan. Okay, so we're at Twitter question time. We don't have a ton of time left. Okay. So let's do two Twitter questions, okay. then we'll go to the pick of the week. Okay. Sinead, <clears throat> bang it. All right, so um, I think it's Mehdi, Mehdi tweets. What are you most excited for in the new season of Game of Thrones? Um, I want to see those dragons yeah. eat people. Yeah. Like, I want them to land in a town and just start eating people like the lawyer in Jurassic Park. I just want Daenerys to own everything. Yes. I just, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm ready for her to just have a massive takeover. It's like when that really <laughs> smart kid owns like the whole side of Monopoly. Like yeah. just take all the sides, yeah. all the hotels, all the houses. I'm yeah. just excited we're gonna see Daenerys in Westeros. Yeah, yeah. finally. have never seen that before, it's exciting. Yeah. Uh, I'm also excited to see uh, everybody, just Jon Snow. I mean, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's I want to see everybody. Back. The family. I mean, it's like yeah. family. Yeah. yeah. This is going to be year seven. Yeah. So yeah. we've been with these people for six years. It's like family. I want to see the family again. Yep. Mm -hmm. Game of Thrones. Yeah. It's about family. It's about That's Fast and the Furious. Yeah. yeah. Whoops, a Daisy cool. on that one. All right, Shane, what's next? <laughs> Brian says, with Star Wars Celebration just passing, would you like a Star Wars TV show and about what? Yes. Well, there are already no. two Star Hold Wars on. TV shows. Well, I think what he means live is live action. action. Um, I love the animated shows. I, I would love to see, and you know, as, as you were saying, David, like Filoni has mm -hmm. mentioned that there are probably gonna be other projects, and we know now that the next Star Wars Battlefront game is actually going to be a canon story that takes place after Return of the Jedi. I'd love to see a an animated series that takes place in that time period, yeah. you know, in the time between Jedi and Force Awakens, or I would love to see uh, an Old Republic series. I'm and that, Republic. that I might like to see yeah, done live action. That would be a great, I think, Netflix series. I'm I'm Old Republic live action. So yeah. I wanna yeah. see, I'm like, I wanna see a live action Star Wars movie that takes place with one like lone Jedi that doesn't know he's a Jedi that is like forming his powers and he has no idea about it. He's on a totally different planet. You mean TV show? You said yeah, TV like show. Series. Sorry. Totally different planet. To it hasn't been written. Has, there's no canon about it. Yeah. This guy literally is like, well, I can move stuff with this. This is crazy. Yeah. And he's never even heard of a Jedi. He's never even heard of this planet. And all of a sudden, he's like kind of learning these powers and he's finding information at weird parts on his planet because he doesn't know what's happening. That's what I want to see. I want to see something that we haven't seen at all before yeah, that cool. ties into nothing. Mm -hmm. 
I like that. Yeah. Mm. Interesting. Boom. See, yeah. I, yeah, I, feel I like, like that. Yeah. <laughs> See, I feel like I have <laughs> I the opposite opinion. That, I, would like, I would watch that. We know that there's so much history. It, like, the Star Wars universe is so large and complex and there is all of this history that we haven't really totally explored and that's mm -hmm. what i want to see but i also see the merit in what you're yeah. saying uh -huh. yeah but like for me it's like because i feel like i'm like There's i want so much i want to know i want to mm -hmm. know like mm -hmm. i want old republic stuff to be like canon and i want it laid out for me and i'm sure Go. there's people that are always going to talk about ah ah ahsoka Ahsoka. 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 Yeah. Yeah. yeah, people. Filoni had an Ahsoka bad. lives question mark. I know. And then I he came back that. on stage. Ahsoka lives exclamation, exclamation point. point. I know. He told he Ooh. told uh, Ashley during an interview uh, right after the uh, season two mm -hmm. finale. He was like, Ashley, you don't you just you don't have to like recall those shirts. You can just put a, a question mark on yeah, them and then right. send them out to people mm -hmm. with a question mark. <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> okay, great. so we have one, two, three, four, five Twitter questions. Uh, left. I'm going to get to those next week, yeah. I promise. I sent out a tweet yesterday, so thank you all for, for responding. We will get to more of your Twitter questions. I apologize. We had so much TV to talk about this week. So thank you, as always, for watching Collider TV Talk. We have to do uh, the pick of the week. And this one is uh, this is a David Griffin classic. He's coming in hot. <laughs> coming in hot. David, <laughs> pick of the week. So you'd be surprised. I'm gonna. I'm. I'm staying in the United States of America. Actually, I'm staying Dang. in my. What? I'm, I'm staying in, in my birth state. I was born in Virginia. Whoa. So I'm going to Virginia. We're specifically gonna go to Walton's Mountain. Ooh. Walton's Mountain. The Waltons. The show that ran from 1971 to 1981. The story of the Walton family during the Depression and how they just came together with Jim <laughs> Bob and uh, Billy Bob and <laughs> Sue Ellen and our uh, Mary Ellen. All these Billy in Bobs. All of and your picks <laughs> of the weeks. So I don't think Sinead has ever watched one. <laughs> the <laughs> Waltons is a face. great show. So my mom and I used to watch the Waltons when I was a kid. And like shows now, like everything's just so like dark and ominous. And obviously, like I know there's a lot of like divorce out and I know like families are separated. I know it's rough out there. But sometimes it is nice to see a family that stuck together and that made it work through a very difficult time. And and they had ups and downs, but it was just it's a good wholesome show. Good Jim wholesome Bob and show. Sue Ellen. And, and so so and every night when they go to bed, there's not no Sue Ellen, it's Mary Ellen actually yeah. got the uh, name wrong. Whenever they go to day. bed at, whenever they go to bed at night, they always say good night to each, each each other. Yeah. And then oh, the whole house, you know? I feel like that's the night, only Jim thing Bob, I night. know about the yes. Waltons. Watch the Waltons. Okay. And I will say that? by this graphic Look behind at that me. Cody, can you go full screen real quick? Can you go full screen on the graphic? There we go. Oh, by, by the look of that thing, I can tell that that's the, my parents' dream of what our family was supposed to look like. And then cut to my family, and there's a dinner table. My mom is screaming at me. My dad is eating silently, and my brother is reading. Is, we'll see, does like, Grandma have Beats by Dre on her head? Yeah, she does. Yeah. <laughs> is that Ray? Uh, that's Ray. No, that's Ray did that. dope. I'd watch well, that well, show. I, I mean, now when you see big photo ops, it's always like people looking dark, and like everybody's like like a band cover, like they're all spread out and all like looking like this that's a happy family <laughs> that's, it's possible okay, people that's it's that's possible fair. meanwhile mom's cheating with the uncle the yeah, one sister's no, on if drugs if this was game of thrones it'll yes, be exactly. it'll be incest yeah, the, the other uncle yeah, yeah, no, they're all making out. the yeah. brother playing the guitar is a failed musician that got into heroin <laughs> back in the day like that's how modern day waltons would like the right bunch <laughs> all right that'll do it for us here on gladder tv Woo. talk we're here every monday guys next uh, nope not next week, next week week after <laughs> may 1st through 5th we are going to be here every single day 8 a.m pacific you trying to give me a heart Easter. attack? Yes. Did sorry. I say it is next, <laughs> next week? week. Bad, <laughs> you want me to throw up on the floor? Don't worry. I, I can take care of Harrison. I'll, I'll, I'll read to him. Read him. Thank read, you. Read, read him at night. Uh, <laughs> every night or every morning, <laughs> we're going to be here talking TV. We got Emma Fife going to be joining us. We got Jason Inman at points. May have a John Roca. We are going to break down TV in its truest form the day after it happens. We'll see how it goes. If you guys are watching and you guys are talking about it and we get mm -hmm. the numbers, it could keep going. I know that Cody and Adam want me to say, please don't watch so that they don't have to wake up early. <laughs> but... Uh, we would love for you to watch so that we could do this more often, maybe three times a week. Who knows? We'll see how the numbers go. Thank you so much, as always, for watching this show every Monday. We love you. Before we go, where can the good people find you on the internet? Sinead DeFries. I'm online at Sinead DeFries, and at that's so Sinead.com. I'll be back on Friday for Movie Talk. Also, Pretty Little Liars comes back um, tomorrow night, so um, I'll be doing Ooh. the after show on stream.tv, and then we'll start doing our 30 seconds of PLL with Sinead again, love which I'm it. really excited about. PLL, 30 seconds, Sinead. David Griffin, David of Yorkshire, Griffin. Mm -hmm. He's not a Tudor, he is a York. He is the family York, he loves his Yorkish ladies. Mm -hmm. He likes Yorkshire Terriers. He loves York pudding. I like Princess and Elizabeth. And he likes York peppermint patties as yeah. well. <laughs> Um, so I have a new job now. I'm going to be the Manny for Harrison, Sinead's baby. So when I'm not manning up, uh, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at GriffinDE. Boom. Boom. 
Absolutely. And the Fife Dog, leading the Fifedom of Tutors. <laughs> Where can the good people find you? You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at my name, Emma Fife. I like to keep it simple. Uh, you can also frequently find me on the Movie Trivia Schmodown doing those post-game interviews. It's a whole lot of fun. The free-for-all <laughs> just dropped uh, this past weekend, and it was a crazy time. So be sure to check that out. Awesome, guys. I'm at Josh McCuga on Twitter and Instagram, The Josh McCuga Show on YouTube. We're here every Monday on Collider TV Talk. Remember, May 1st, we're here every day. May 1st through the 5th, put down the book, pick up the remote. Give me that book. Give me that book. Give me that book. <laughs> you be respectful See? to this book. You, put, you be respectful. Ooh. Hey, pick whoa. Hey, guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.